Hello again. I'm Ella Green Moten, and I want to use this segment to talk a little bit about putting CBPR into action. I talked during uh, the other segment about the different partnerships that I've been a um, member of or the experiences from some of those partnerships. Well, for this segment, I want to talk a little bit about um, the Michigan connection. And I'm hoping that you might get a chance to see a little bit of uh, some of the video that we did highlighting the full program um, that the Michigan Connection talks about. But I want to talk for just a few minutes about the Community Board of the Prevention Research Center of Michigan. And for those of you who might not know, the Prevention Research Center of Michigan was one, at one time, one of about 37 different uh, prevention research centers. And the way it's set up, there has to be a community board. And when we were asked to create a community board, um, it was it was just commonplace because we were asked to do what we had been doing all the time. And it actually brings back into play um, the piece that I did talking about the Sankofa bird and how you have to reach back and grab your past and pull those things that um, you did well, bring them forward to help you move forward to the future. Well, that's what we were able to do with the community board of the Prevention Research Center because we had had years of experience and actually the community members believe, I don't know if the academics believe it or not, but the community members believe that it's because of that past history of working together and creating relationships and developing um, trust and respect that we were in a position to successfully apply for one of the prevention research centers because our partnership included grassroots community-based organizations and I think there were about six of them and at one time there were six community-based organizations with six different voices so we had to work on that but we had community-based organizations we had the academic institutions both the University of Michigan Flint and the University of Michigan Ann Arbor and we had practice that was part of our, our partnership. We had the Genesee County Health Department. So we were very big on that three-leg stool. And we talked a lot about how that stool needed to be understood because what we said was, number one, a three-leg stool might not be very sound anyway, but especially when you're looking at a partnership where one of the legs is shorter than the others. And we were very specific about letting our partners know, we know that the community leg is not as strong and it's shorter, and we're about growing that leg. So those kinds of things um, really put us in a position to do well with this community board. Uh, we were very specific about um, the, the partnerships that were part of this group. We were specific about what those partnerships were able to do. Um, the members, for instance, one of the things that the community board had to do was serve on the national, uh, choose a, a representative to serve on the national community committee. And we were very adamant about the fact that only a grassroots person could serve in that role. An academic um, coordinator or anyone else from the academic institution could not serve in that role. And even in my role as bridge today, I might not be able to serve in that role. We were very true to what we said. Um, and when it came to the structure, we had rules for everything. We decided how we would handle conflicts, we decided when we wanted to meet. We decided who would be a chair. I was the first chair and actually the first community chair of our community board. But we had a rotation so that there would be a community chair, 
then an academic chair, then a practice chair. So we paid attention to the details. Um, I'm a process person. And when we developed our operating procedures, and there would be times when some of our partners needed to move a little bit more quickly, we were very quick to say, no, we have a process. That's not the way we agreed to work together. So we have to stay on task. Um, and the other piece of the community board uh, of the Prevention Research Center that I wanted to talk about is how it actually ended up being um, or having impact on what's happening in Flint, Michigan right now with the water crisis. So as a member of the community board for many years, one of the founding members, um, I took our, what we were doing very seriously. It was personal for me. So when I thought we had, I had the respect for others and I thought others had respect for me. So the way this plays out is that when the water crisis hit, and we found out that we had been drinking poisoned water for a year um, and nobody bothered to tell us about it. I was PO'd. I really was. And the reason I was is because I started to think back about my partners. We had developed a relationship with our public health partners, with our local public health partners. And when I give of myself, and I think you're giving of yourself, I expect certain things to happen. So what it made me realize was that we were, I felt disrespected. I felt that they did not protect me. And it hurt me to the point that um, at first I, I couldn't talk about it because I really didn't know exactly what was going on. But when I, when I admitted to myself why I was feeling the way I was feeling, it's because I thought we had developed a level of trust and respect where if something was wrong, somebody would tell us. And the reason I felt that way was because at one time, we had a health officer who, regardless to what the situation was, he might not be able to say it to us personally, but he would find a way to let us know Something's going on and you guys need to look at it. That didn't happen. So I felt, um, I felt mistreated. I felt disrespected. And until I was able to voice that, until I was able to say those words and admit that I was really heartbroken. Because how do you allow 100,000 people to drink poison water? And I'm still dealing with it. As you can probably tell, I get passionate about it when I start to talk about it, but that's real. But because when you develop relationships, you need to realize that some people take those, those relationships to heart. Some people really believe in that. And if you're not believing in the relationship, don't pretend. It's show up and be who you are, but be real, right? So the community board of the prevent mm, 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 start that over. So understanding the impact of the Flint water crisis and the community board of the Prevention Research Center of Michigan provided the foundation and frame of reference for many of us in the city of Flint to begin to process the impacts of the Flint water crisis based on a context including the relationships and partnerships in place. And I just threw this in uh, to think about um, as you look at some of those turbulent partnerships or relationships, sometimes it's good to think in terms of traffic signs. Is it time to stop? Is it time to yield? Is it time to turn around? Whatever the situation is, these signs will help us look at our partnerships and relationships in a different way. And we'll talk more about these in another segment. But again, a special thanks to the Engaged for Equity partners and to the other community partners. Thank you. <laughs>